it's time to mount the turbo now. So what we're gonna use is one of these engine support bars, or similar to what I was talking about on Instagram, what I was gonna make. Um, Hayden from Haywire Rotorsport gave us this idea, and I was thinking that's a bloody brilliant idea. Very similar to what I was gonna make, less adjustment. And I was gonna have my one bolted permanently to the guards, make it a modular setup so you can slide it back and forth. But uh, for the price, you can't complain. It was 180 bucks from Top Mac. It's got bearings of these beautiful little handles. They say it's not even worth trying to roll out a bit to make one for the price. So what we'll be doing is using a bit of flat bar here. I'll be making up a little flange with just uh, two holes for the bolts. That'll sit on there. We've got some 3 8 bolts there. So two bolt holes there. I weld an eye to it, and then better have it directly to this bit here. We'll get rid of the hook. We'll have it directly to this threaded rod here. If that's not long enough to get into position, I will um, get along a bit of threaded rod. Yeah, simply it. So once we've got the turbo hanging, what we end up doing next is I've already got the little T4 flange on there. So let's weld a bit of stainless bar to the actual flange. As we're on the exhaust ports there, you'll see shortly it'll all make sense. And that'll be it. Here we have it all together, self-explanatory. The cheaper ones are for 100 bucks, basically they just have this one bar here. And you have your two legs down there to help hold the motor. This one here has got this top bar as well, so you can orientate it either way to hold north-south motors, east-west motors, basically any orientation really. Got a lot of adjustment. So let's uh, mount it on the car and you'll see what it's all about. Bloody brilliant for the price, right? As I say, you just couldn't even build it for that. So what we need to do now is make up a little flange that's gonna go off this oil return drain. We need to make up a little flange there. We're gonna weld a nut here with a bit of threaded rod, and it's gonna to join to our engine support bar, and that's how we're gonna be able to hang this turbo. So first things first, we need to get our measurements. So we'll write on the paper first so you can all understand and hopefully you can follow. What we need to do is find our outside diameter of our little flange we wanna make. It's roughly around 70 mil. So now we know this is here is 70. 70 mil. We know that this flat bar is 25 mil flat bar. So we'll put our 25 here. Then next up, what we need to find out is our bolt hole centers. So how we do that, you go outside of one bolt hole to the outside of the other one, just like that. It's working out roughly around 51 mil. So now we know this is 51 mil. So let's transfer it over to this piece of metal here. So we know we're 25, so our halfway between there and there, it's gonna be half a 25, obviously. So that's 12.5, that's 12.5. Let's run our center line. Hopefully you can see that there. Now we know that that's 70, so let's mark out 70. It's gonna be the outside sides of our flange. 70. So now we need to find our center datum point. So we'll half that 70 there, which is gonna be 35. 35, that's our halfway point. Now, what we need to do is mark out our bolt hole. So real simple now. So we go half of 51, which is gonna be 25.5. A bit rough but hopefully you can see it so there we have it there goes our bolt hole spacing there and we use the punch and there we have it and that's how you mark out a simple little flange or yeah something anything to do with bolt hole spacing it's um it'd be cool for you something that i could show you how to do a pcd like if you're trying to mark out around a circle but Hopefully we have to cover that somewhere on the car. But yeah, this is just real basic stuff. And yeah, hopefully um, you could follow that. Here's our engine support bar on the car now, all mounted up. A lot of adjustability, as we can see. Got the rotational way this way. Then we have this one here. Don't think we're gonna need it though. And then we'll have our height up and down adjustment through here. So argument sake, say if we use this bar, just for context, we're gonna have a threaded rod hanging out of here. Then we need to make a little flange that joins the turbo, then we can slide the turbo up and down in its position, back forth, and rotate it either way we need it. The holes are drilled, now it's time to weld that nut on. All welded up, 
Now it's time to uh, hang the turbo off it. That's our flange all done now, time to put the threaded rod on. Got a little lock nut on there. Now it's time to hang it. Here we have our bullet stainless flange from Vinifab, beautiful piece of kit. It's all been machined out and fits the schedule 10 2 inch tubing really well. If you look on the back, it's been recessed, so that'll save a lot of warping, so happy as with that, I didn't know that. I'm not wondering what that foil is for, it's for when I take a bit of this rod on. You know it doesn't splatter off into the rotor housings. So what we'll be doing is using a bit of this solid stainless bar, then we'll tack it onto here, up towards the collector, sorry the turbo flange, and then once that's all done, unbolt the turbo and then we link our pipes up to the collector, simple as that. So our next issue if we try and run it between the strut tower and the intake manifold, the exhaust port lines up quite well now, but it is just touching everything. There's basically no room at all, this compressor housing is just way too big. So yeah, the thing is I can't lift it up too much higher because getting a tight 3 inch bend this way will be near up onto the bonnet. So yeah, it's a bit tricky. Give me another couple hours and hopefully I can sort something out. Day two on the turbo manifold, so I haven't progressed a lot. I was out here from one o'clock till nine o'clock at night yesterday and I gained absolutely nothing but that. It took that long just to get to that stage and even that stage there is uh, it's gonna work. Our issue being is, because I wanna keep this a true twin scroll, that's where the issue is lying. Um, we can't merge it in nice and smooth yeah, I can't really explain it, but being a twin merge, you got to have them like that. You can't have like one pipe coming here, then just half a little pipe here intersecting. You got to have a true separate divider. And trying to do that is just yeah, this turbo is just not landing anywhere. And another thing you might be wondering why the tape is there. So basically, that's where everything's bisecting, and that's where I want the new intercooler pipes to run for aesthetics to go straight instead of doing a big loop around for no reason. Same as this one, used to loop around here, around the shot tower, back up and in. So I wanna cut these off and just run them parallel where the, where the tape is sitting. So just straight there and straight on that side there as well. So another issue we're having with this turbo is I'm not too sure if it's gonna clear the bonnet. So if we cut this off and run it straight over to there, I'm not too sure if we're gonna have enough clearance height. Hopefully we do, we can probably whack a little bit more off that and try and get a real tight 3 inch donut that will just come real sharp and back into this one straight over here. So hopefully the bonnet clears it, or else that's going to be the next issue and I don't want to run no bonnet because it'll just look silly like that. But yeah, and look how close everything is. Basically this is the only position we can hang this turbo and it's so close to the intake manifold and basically nearly touching that strut tower over there as well. Um, if I really really can't get this and you know I'm not happy with it, I'm just going to go to a V-band entry turbo, <laughs> just be a lot easier that way. So we're now at our Outback uh, <laughs> workshop outside, so anyhow, so we need to you see the misalignment there, so what I did is pull it up there and you mark it with a, a marker, you see around the base there, pull it to where we want it so it's r roughly parallel and then we cut it off there and then that should get rid of that play there. So we've roughed that one out now and as you can see it lines up not too bad now. A little bit of a difference but we can get that with a bit of straight pipe. Here's a bit of a trick if you need to cut a segment. I've used like an o-ring or these cable ties and they'll cut out a perfect segment. So see this one here, this was done by eye and as you can see it's gone elongated. Whereas this one stays a perfect circle. And when you go to join it you'll have a gap at the bottom like that. So, you need to get these, uh, whenever you cut pipe or tubing, you need to get these segments as perfect as possible. Yeah, I hope that explains the difference if you just do it freehand. Here goes our segments all cut out. It wasn't worth videoing this, I probably spent about four or five hours doing this. You know, you can only do a little bit at a time, so you put it in, do a little grind, put it back in, another bit of a grind, put it back in. See, it takes a while. That one there, I wish I could have done it in one piece, but sadly I couldn't. It looks like it goes one way, but really, say if we got this one here, 
and it looks like it goes like that but it actually twists up and around so yeah could only do that in two segments but things gonna flow all right not too many hard bends yeah she should be good to go so now I've got to tack it up and then we're gonna do a wastegate placement and then weld the whole thing together be good to go we're up to the prep stage now, so I've used a little rotary die grinder for flapper wheel just to get rid of all the burrs on the inside. Also put weld preps on all the segments. We need to give it a final wash, and what I'll be using for that is a CRC brake cleaner, I've run out of acetone, and a bit of that scotch pad. What we're going to be using to weld it up is just this little 200 amp ACDC Bok welder. It's nothing fancy, it's only a tiny little thing, little caddy. Um, I'm no good welder at all, I'm just self taught like everybody else out there. Let's see if we can uh, tack it up and then weld it all together. Parts are all clean now, we're ready to tack them all together. She's all tacked up, ready for the final weld. Next thing we need to consider is the wastegate placement. So we're going to run it over here, straight off this way. We've got ample room, the back's a little bit more tighter, but still definitely manageable. So we have it sitting roughly around here, and we'll dump out the front down there. So plenty of room and it'll be a great flow. Turbo's all sitting in place now. Gutted how close it had to be to the lower intake manifold. What I'll do there to combat the heat, I'll get the turbine housing ceramic coated, possibly the lower intake manifold ceramic coated as well. And I might do an inconel shield wrapping around it. I couldn't even put this turbo forward because if I did, by the time we do a 90 degree bend, it was gonna basically sit out this sit out the bonnet and that would look pretty ugly. But yeah, check the clearance out. And it just fits. These Borg Warner compressor housings are just way too big. Um, I did try the other method of having that outlet of the compressor housing downwards. But as you can see, we've got this cross member now for the rotary. And yeah, there just wasn't enough room to run the pipes down. Because by the time we ran them down, they would have been pretty close to the ground for how low this car would have been. And also we've got our intercooler here and radiator there. So we don't have a lot of room. But yeah, so about as good as it's gonna get. One thing, one thing I am happy with though, it is symmetrical. There was a, one other way I was gonna have it. I was gonna have it twisted a bit, and that would have brought it away from the intake manifold. But to gain another five or so mil this way, that turbo was quite twisted. So yeah, there it is. Not much we can do about it now. It's gotta run with it. So we'll have our charge pipe coming straight this way, hopefully and straight here as well so it sort of should all look symmetrical and yeah better than it was anyway just has spaghetti junction everywhere coming around that one was over there coming around so just be straight straight good to go okay the manifold a quick linish gave it a good clean up now we're ready to weld it i have absolutely no idea what i'm doing i've never welded this schedule 10 stainless stuff so we'll give it a go by all means i'm absolutely no welder whatsoever I'm just self-taught, so yeah, let's see what we can do. Gonna have a go welding this manifold up. I've never used this pedal before. It came with the welder. Had a quick little demo on the back. I'm by far a welder. Just self-taught like everyone else, and yeah, I thought I'd do it on the back where it's hidden. No one can see, and I think it's gonna come up all right. I've never welded the Schedule 10 stainless stuff. Got a purge welding at the moment. Not purge welding, got a purging at the moment, so yeah. We'll give it a go and start wrapping up this whole exhaust thing. Eh? 